here. Welcome, everybody. I'm Jackie, co-founder of Plant Chicks. We're here with... Marcia Prince. <laughs> and we're here with... Madeline Hardacre. <laughs> and guys, if you do not know Dr. Madeline Hardacre, you're about to get to meet this incredible woman. We've done some lives with her in the past. You guys come on, say hi. Uh, one of the reasons we wanted to bring Dr. Hardacre on this live is because not only is she this incredible physician who's creating a beautiful practice that she loves, she's doing coaching, she sees different patients and clients, and she can talk a little bit about this. She's also a mother, she's also a wife, daughter, she does all, she has all these different shoes that she fills. And on top of all of that, this wild woman just ran 50 miles, but she's not stopping there. She's training for a century or what, what are they called? A hundred miler. Okay. A hundred miler. I was going to say, so I think it probably is a fancy name. So she's doing all the <laughs> I'm just 100 miles. <laughs> uh, 100 miles is pretty fancy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Apparently, I have to come up with something fancier. <laughs> I can't even imagine. First of all, I can't imagine running. I can't even imagine running a half marathon right now. But you just did 50 miles and you're getting ready. You're training for 100. I just want to hear a little bit, like, take us through because I know you're doing some different things with your training than what you've done before. And then we're gonna, like Marcy and I will probably stop you a couple times while you're telling the story. And so you guys can relate at home. And like, if you've got any questions for Dr. Madeline or for us, type them in, we'll get to you. So Madeline, how did you, how are you fitting all of this in? And what does your training look like? <laughs> you know what, well, first of all, I, I will, go very briefly back to where this all started in that well I've been like a long time marathon runner and and like I've always had I always had a little seedling in my in my head about doing longer distances than that because I really felt like I could but just like it it was just never anything that was like in the forefront of my mind and I think both of you guys have done the well coaches training mm -hmm. or Jackie has oh Jackie has so in the well coaches training, you, you like, so this was the health and wellness um, coaching training that I did. And during that training, we got paired up with these partners that we practiced with. And, and there was this part where we were coached by our partner and like really developing like the vision we have for our wellness, what that looks like. And it was during that coaching session, it, like that I, Hold on a what second, Madeline. I want to pause you for one second. Your microphone is going in and out. I'm wondering oh. if. Hmm. Let's try it again. And if it keeps okay. going in and out, we might want to try it without. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Um, during the um, during that session is where it like came out of my mouth that I like. Um, which I hadn't ever like verbalized. So um, anyway, so that's where it started. And so that's been a, a few years ago. And so it just kind of put me on this journey after I had recognized like how important this was is like something like unfinished business that I still had in my life. Um, then it just kind of started the ball rolling of like, okay, well, like what are the next distances to do and, and what can that look are you guys hearing me okay? <laughs> it is going yeah. in and out. You might want to take off the microphone. That might be better. Okay. And you guys type in any questions for Dr. Madeline because this is crazy. And I love that your well coaches training, when you guys do like different certifications and trainings, you actually have to play the part, not play the part. You have to take part and like see what it's like to be coached. And then also you get to practice coaching. And I love that you that you had an aha moment, your aha moment that's been like changed your life trajectory through. So how did that, moment. yeah, so how did that change? Like you have this aha moment and you just make this decision, I'm gonna do this. Like how does it change for you to actually go, the action of it, to accomplish it, to do this? Right, Because can you hear me now? Perfect. Yeah. Okay, okay. 
So, so yeah, so it was during that time I was like, okay, no, this is something that I really actually like, it's really important to me. And, and, um, and so then it like, it was literally during then the subsequent like practice coaching sessions that we, like, I developed this plan of like what this was going to look like and okay, thinking ahead, what are the races that I, you know, was it? You know, and, and with any of these things, like any like big vision, you don't know exactly how you're going to get there, but you start taking steps forward, and that's exactly what I did. And 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 um, part of it was also involved a good friend of mine who has run these distances before, and so once I then kind of mentioned to her that I felt ready to take this on. Of course, she was like, she's been a great mentor because she like really took me under her wing and she's like, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is what, this is what Saturday is going to look like for us. Like, <laughs> so. Whoa. so how long did it take you from the aha moment to actually accomplishing that? How long was the, Oh, time? that was about a year. Like from, from the aha to the 50 miler was about a year. And then now it's going to be about a year and a, not quite a year and a half to the point of the hundred miler that I have planned. So, so I'm doing it in like a stepwise fashion and yes, and like you I, should 50 miles at a time. <laughs> right. And I have it like, it's, it's like all planned out on the calendar. So, and then the thing I've done differently here very recently is I recognize like to take on something like a hundred miles. Like I, I don't really feel like it's something that I can like just wing. Like even the 50 miles, I, I, I've always kind of had this approach of like, okay, I just kind of wing it. It'll all come together. I like, and I decided for a hundred miles that I didn't, I didn't want to go into that just winging it. Um, decided that was probably a bad idea. So <laughs> So actually, I I hired a coach um, who specializes in that distance and beyond. And so um, I have, for the first time ever in my life, a actual like training plan that I'm following, which provides a lot of structure, which actually I'm really enjoying much more than I realized I would. So that's actually I mean, pretty cool. It is. It's I've got a question because Madeline, didn't you, is this your, this isn't your first 50 miler, is it? Isn't it your second? So I've done one 50 miler and then a handful of 50 Ks. 50 K. Okay. When was the, the most recent one where you had the horrible blisters on your feet? Oh, that was, that was a 50 miler. Yeah. 50 miler. So yeah. with that one, you did the training and everything on your own for that one, correct? Yes. Yes. And you decided after that experience that for the hundred miler, you wanted to hire a coach. Is that right? Yeah. You know what? After the 50 miler, I was like, why on earth am I thinking about a hundred miles? So that was my, <laughs> there were there like some expletives in there too. <laughs> <laughs> But then, like, after I, like, recovered a little bit, then I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, there's, there, I have more in me. And so then that was, like, once I registered for the 100, then I was like, okay, this is, like, this is not something to, like, take lightly. And, and I really should have an actual plan going forward, so... <laughs> I love that you winged 50 miles and then we're, we're going to get a plan for a hundred, but I'm sure with the 50 miles, you did learn a lot of things. You learned that you need a coach. You learned that you needed a plan. So putting these things in, I was saying perspective, like a different perspective right. from that learning off the first one that always helps. Cause a lot of times, you know, when you're, you're doing something brand new, you're like an infant, right? You're just brand mm -hmm. new at it. There, oh, you always have to be a beginner and then you get this experience and then you become advanced. You become a pro because someone who's never run five miles, you have tips for someone who can run five miles, right? Versus someone who's never ran before. How can they tell someone who hasn't ran before what to do? Right. Well, and it's all just like, I don't know, the way I look at it, it's all just like this big, crazy experiment with your body. Yep. And like figuring out like, okay, this is what works for me. This is what doesn't work for me. This is like, and so much of it's up here. Like, it's not just like what, like nutrition works for me. It's like what thoughts work for me. 
and that's big. Yeah. I love that. The mindset is super, super important. So just kind of walk us through some of your mindset, like as you are going through the process of just uh, training, not for your hundred right now, but for your 50, like what was the process and the mindset? Oh, um, you know what? There was, there was a lot of, um, one, just believing that like, you have to like get rid of the doubt aspect. And I think that's important, like with any goal we have, like if we don't believe we can do it, like that, yes. like that has to be like step one. <laughs> <laughs> because like nothing's gonna happen if we don't believe in ourselves. So like you have to develop that, like, like with whatever it is, like figuring that out, like recognizing, oh, no, 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 like I totally believe I have it in me to do that. Um, you know, so that was, that was a big thing. Um, and then during the training and then even during the race, like recognizing like that you want to just stay in the moment. Like it's so easy, like even with the hundred mile to think, like to be thinking ahead too much and like, it's just like, it's like you have to just have faith in the process and know that wherever you are right now is okay. And, and so that was like really a big mindset shift, like during the training and then during the race of just saying, I'm okay. Like, I'm okay right now. Like, I don't know what, what an hour will bring, but it doesn't matter because I'm okay right now. And then, and then using that same mindset, like, yeah, like right now during my training, like, I'm like, I don't know what se September's training is going to look like, but I know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and right now. And that's all that matters. But what happens because we all go through hardships, right? Like mm -hmm. in life, we go through different situations or we get to a part in the race where it's extremely hard, your body's hurting. Uh, mm -hmm. I wake up in the morning, I don't wanna to go to the gym and work out. Like how, like when you're in the middle of running 50 miles and as you're preparing to race or preparing to do your 100 mile race, even in your training runs or in your training, how do you push through when you're not feeling good? Because like so many podcasts and different things that I read, David Goggins is a prime example. So David Goggins, he pushes himself so hard. And so many people, like our bodies can do so much more than what mm -hmm. we think they can. We can push further. We can go harder. We can go faster. We can run longer than what we, mm -hmm. our bodies physically, what we feel like when we're in our bodies, mm -hmm. when we're doing it. So how do you push forward and keep going when you're, in the race and you're so tired or even when you're doing a training run mm -hmm. and you're just exhausted how do you push mm -hmm. through that you know what like the best way i can describe it is do you ever have like those days where you're like oh my gosh today is like just like i'm in a funk i'm in a like like i'm in this mood i i, I don't know like and then all of a sudden you find like whatever the feeling that was, it's totally gone. Like all of a sudden your day is great. Your mindset's good. Your head's clear. Like you feel good. And then like <laughs> there's just these ups and downs. And that's what I think with like any race of like a long distance, like recognizing there's going to be times where you feel good and there's going to be times where you feel bad. And that's just part of it. And just because you feel bad now doesn't mean like in five minutes you're going to feel bad. Like, and it's, it's just, it's just kind of like a, a, an example of life in general, just condensed into a race. Like it's the same ups and downs mentally that you have throughout your day where you're like, oh, this totally sucks. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, but it, like life is grand. The same thing happens. <laughs> <laughs> right? no, that does make sense. It totally makes sense. I mean, just like recently, I mean, a good example, like, like a couple of weeks ago, I ran a 50K nearby. And I was in like the foothills. Of, what is 50K for someone who don't like me? Because I know a 5K is three miles. What is 50K? Okay, 31 miles. 31. Okay. 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 
<laughs> so it was on these beautiful trails um, outside of Auburn, California, foothills of the Sierra Nevadas on the west side of the mountains. Um, so really beautiful trails. And so it would literally, like, for example, like I'd be running and I'd be like, like, oh my gosh, I have 10 more miles. Like that feels overwhelming. Okay, bad place to take your mind. But then all of a sudden I'd be like, this trail is gorgeous. Like, how amazing is this? Like, isn't this so beautiful? And so it's like, all of a sudden, you're totally distracted by the beauty of what's around you. And, and I would notice like, okay, 10 miles on this trail, this is no big deal. Like, because this is amazing. And so it's just how you, it's, it's how you choose to think about things at any given time. I love it. It's like, first it's belief in yourself. And then second is be present because when you're present, mm -hmm. You're noticing things around you that you probably didn't notice before right. because say right. if your foot was hurting you could focus on your foot hurting but if you're looking at the beauty you're like oh look at this and it takes the distraction right. off the pains and aches and pains in your body really? as you're pushing through which is completely beautiful because a lot of people it's hard for them to be present in the moment no matter what they're doing mm -hmm. and so just being present is a whole other animal like just being right there and just feeling and smelling and touching and breathing just that entire moment. Cause that, that helps you with memories too. Like I'm sure you just described that memory to us, memory to us, like just running and you're like, wow, this is so beautiful. And you could describe it in your head what it looked like because you felt it. And, but, and I think it's just like so applicable to like just our day-to-day -day lives in general. It's just, you know, we all need to like refocus and just be in the moment and focus on what we're doing and not be thinking of what the next 10 miles is going to look like, but like, you know, or what the meeting in two hours is going to look like, or what, you know, the kids' parent teacher conference is going to sound like, or what, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever it is, but just like life, like, I mean, it's just, it's such a similar experience to just, I know that sounds crazy, but but like those long runs is just like similar to a long day. It's all the same ups and downs. And no, actually, it makes perfect sense. Life is like a hundred miler right now. So right. We're, we're sitting here. We have to go, you know, one foot in front of the other, one mile at a time right. before we can get to a hundred miles. So just enjoying the mile that's in front of us is what counts. Cool. <laughs> and being present in the moment, which is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Like so many of us don't do that and it's hard we we let our we let our minds we try and go too much into the future or look play something back and we want to rewrite something which we can't do so i think that's actually perfect but madeline how do you fit it all in because you have your own business you've got children you're married you, you're growing your business you're recreating your practice like how do you fit all this training in and how how much time do you spend a day in training i know i'm asking a ton of questions but how do you do it all you know i think um for me the key is and, and you know and i work with my clients all the time on, on developing kind of the same way of looking at it first of all like i know like i have a very clear like this is my mission these are my goals like i've done I mean, it's taken a while to get there, but I feel like there's a lot of clarity to what it, it is I want. And whether it's my business or my my running or my family, like I, I feel like there's a lot of clarity there. And then to make it actually happen on a day-to-day -day basis, like I have to schedule it. Like it's a matter of like my my time at the gym is on my calendar. My time with my clients is on my calendar. My time for my run is on my calendar. And those things like the time at the gym and the time on my run, like are, are commitments I have to me, which are just as important as like a commitment I have to showing up for you guys or to showing up for a client or showing up at a dentist appointment or like whatever it is. Like that time is is just as non-negotiable as everything else. And, and that's like how I've recognized, like that's how it has to be in order for it to get done. And do you have help at home? Do, do, like, 
does your husband help prepare meals or are you the one preparing the meals? How does that look? Because you're doing so much, but I love how you're also making that commitment to yourself. That's like, well, you know, I, I have to say I am in a very beautiful space from the standpoint of, I mean, yes, I raised three children, but um, two of them are now young adults and out of the house. And my daughter who's still home is 17 and she drives and, and, you know, has her friends and her school and her, you know, all of her activities. And so that has freed up a lot of, of time that was occupied with them previously. So, so I am in a very, like, I have to recognize, like I am in a, in a very nice place from that standpoint. Um, and then, you know, yeah, from like cooking, stand, I, first of all, from like, you, you mentioned like making meals, but like, I am not organized enough to like meal prep and like think ahead a lot. Like, <laughs> right. For some reason, that has just never been like my strong suit. So I um, very much am just like, uh, kind of in the moment with that too, of like literally, I have to have like simple, just simple, clean whole foods. And I just kind of create something and I don't like to spend more than like 30 minutes doing it. And, but you know, over time, I, I mean, I feel like I've been doing this for a long time. So I've kind of figured out like what works for us and what foods to have on hand so that I have easy, clean meals. And so, yeah, yeah, we've actually watched your social media and your stories and, and you've posted what you've created. And I feel well, and you're very similar to the plant chicks, Jackie and I, because that's what we do, too. We don't like to spend, you know, hours in the kitchen, meal prepping, cooking and cleaning, uh, mm -hmm. let alone have a million ingredients. <laughs> so if it is going to be a million ingredients, it's going to be something simple. That's whole foods. Maybe that's frozen. Mm -hmm. that can thaw out real quick. You can saute, but yeah, we've seen your meals. I mean, you are filling yourself up with plenty of plants because obviously you need to eat ample amount of calories for the workouts that you're doing. Oh, I eat a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. I have to tell you guys, I love the, uh, wait, you like, you just had like a spaghetti squash with the yes. lentils from Twitter Joe's. And I was like, oh yes, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so it is just three ingredients. It. Yeah, three ingredients. And I, like, <laughs> I literally was like, that is an amazing idea. <laughs> 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 oh, I, I like to, I take shortcuts whenever possible. I feel like I don't have the time or the patience for it. So Jack and I are the same way. Like I like to cook when I have the time, but I feel like it's more of a weekend thing when you have that time, like on the weekdays, I don't have time. I just right. don't. It's just like, I want my smoothie. I want my fast little meals get in and out of mm -hmm. the kitchen because mm -hmm. you know, when Jackie's been in town with me or I've been in town with her <laughs> cooking. We always a lot one person to cook because we know the time and we'll help them out and stuff, but we get it. We were just like, Oh my gosh, this is taking up time just to cook and clean it. Like we don't have that time. So I love that you have simple meals as well. And, and that's important yeah. to you as you train for this hundred miler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. I mean, like you said, like the, the time, like I have to be very intentional about, uh, and, and, you know, and I, I try to really help, um, you know, like the, the women that I work with develop that same like intention of like, okay, this, like, this is what I want for my life. Here's like where I'm challenged. Now let's create some structure and strategies and everything to figure this out and, and, and figure out their calendar where everything fits in. Because ultimately, like we really do just like, we make time for what we have decided is important to us. Correct. What and do you do? You know, I mean, like if we put us like way down here, mm. like, then we're not going to make the time for ourselves. Like right. we not... need to flip that. We need to put ourselves up at the top mm -hmm. so we can perform and be there for our family and for ourselves too. Right. 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 For ourselves and then be there for our families and loved ones. Right. Exactly. And it's like such a switch in mindset for so many people because they're so, they've spent so much time with themselves being down here and everybody else being up here. And then, 
And then they wonder why they can't reach like the health and the well-being that they want. Like they know it's out there, but there's this big gap, but it's like finding how to put themselves up at the top of the list and, and right. not feel guilty about it. That's the big thing. And it's, it's oftentimes like some of the smallest movements and it's so hard to say, this is what you need to do. You need to do X, Y, and Z, A, B, C, whatever, because it's so mm -hmm. different for every individual and what works for mm -hmm. them. But it, it is all about making yourself a priority. Like you really wanted to do, God knows why, this 100 mile run. And I'm totally kidding. I love you, Madeline. You know that. But like, I cannot imagine running that distance. But this is something that you really want to do. And you're committed to your training. And you, like you said, you're putting it in your calendar. And it's a non negotiable. When that is in your calendar, nothing else is happening at that time. But what do you do to like recharge and how do you, what do you do to relax? Wait, you cut out for a second. Oh, sorry. What do you do to recharge and relax? What during oh. your training? Um, good question. Like, I, I mean, I think, I think what, if this makes sense, I just, I feel like I found this nice balance in my life where maybe like when I'm running, I'm recharging from my work day. And when I'm working, I'm like, not like, I mean, my day is very busy. Like I don't really have a, a spot where like, oh, okay, this was my like recharge, but I feel like there's a balance. So the different aspects of my life, like, like it all flows and there's not anything specific I would say that I do, except, I mean, I guess this is a huge thing. I am so into sleep. Like it, that's yes. also a non-negotiable. <laughs> so, so that would probably be my like, my my clear recharge. But because I'm an early riser, but I'm also like, you know, 8.30, I am, I am heading to bed. So <laughs> that's impressive. No, but I love, and I never heard anyone say it like this, like your lifestyle basically re-energizes and charges itself from work to training because training is a stress relief for you, but it also challenges your body, which probably also helps you to sleep better. And sleep is, I mean, that's a no brainer. Actually, it's not a no brainer. A lot of people don't realize the importance of sleep. And when we sleep, that's when our body repairs and regenerates and does all the good stuff, right? It's like the natural detoxification process. Yeah. So sleeping is just huge. How many hours a night do you sleep? I would say one, uh, let me add it up. So like eight. That's so I, usually by like nine, I'm falling asleep and I get up at five, 5.15. Um, and that's just like, I naturally wake up at that time. And I think it's just like years of having to get up at that time. <laughs> How long did it take you to train? Uh, like, well, I have two questions, two part. So when you were doing your 50 miles, how long, like how many hours a day do you train? And then how long did it take you to run 50 miles? Oh, okay. Um, you know what? Hours a day, it, like it depended on the day, but like kind of at the peak of, of the training, I was doing about like 15 hours a week. Okay. Um, so it kind of depended on like, cause there was usually like a really long run on the weekends, but then, um, you know, maybe an hour, two hours during the week on, 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 you know, other days, shorter training runs. And so that was kind of the peak of it. And I think, I mean, I haven't seen my training plan like that I'll have as I get closer to the hundred mile, but I, I don't anticipate it. Be like, I mean, it'll probably be a little bit more than that, but um, typically it's kind of broken up where, like, you don't do like a like sixty miles to train for a hundred mile. Like, you do right. more like maybe two long runs back to back to get your body used to that time on your feet, and then 
do some, like I have several like 50 Ks and then a 50 miler on the schedule between now and then. So, so, you know, you can use some other races as like part of your like longer training runs building up to that. Okay. So, so that's what I just And then, then the yeah. time that it took me, so it was 14 hours um, was the amount of time I was out there, um, which for, I mean, you know, it's it's a slow pace. Like I am, I'm not fast for that distance. The the race that that race had a huge amount of elevation gain. So, like the first twenty miles was just like going um, up for twenty miles. But so a lot of that you do more as like a power, or like at least I do. Like for ultras of that distance, you do a lot of power hiking on those on those big climbs. Wow, so that's very impressive. You, 14 hours. So obviously, <laughs> what time did it start? What time did it end? Like 5.30 I mean, in the morning okay. was the start time. So yeah. Did you just, just like fall down and collapse when you were <laughs> Did you sleep for five days? <laughs> I will I, no, but I will tell you though what did happen. Like in the morning, like my son, my my son actually did it with me. I mean, although he like ran much, much faster, but so we went back to our hotel and the next morning, like when I climbed out of bed, I mean, it was like he and I both still laugh at, the, at, at that moment of like me trying to get to the bathroom because it was like my feet and ankles and like every, like everything hurt so badly. <laughs> I can't. You're just like crawling to the bathroom. <laughs> so, like, that's what you want to do. I just remember like holding on to the bed and like not being able to get from the bed to the dresser, like without like feeling like I was going to fall over. How was your son? How did he feel? Uh, he, he Well, he felt pretty beat up too. He actually ran it really fast. Um, and like his time was like eight, eight hours. Wow. Eight hours. Yeah. He like placed sixth overall. He's, Whoa. he's like a beast on the trail. So wow. How long are you allotting for the hundred miles? Like what's the cutoff? Oh, yeah. You know what? Yeah. It has a cutoff of 30 hours. And so like, I, so I'll be somewhere in the, I would think, I mean, I don't think I'll be, I don't think I'll be faster than 24. Definitely. I'll be like somewhere after that. I don't know. You know, and the thing is, is ultimately like I think about it and I'm like, you know, my goal is to finish and like my goal is to finish before the cutoff and not feel like I've totally trashed my body. So. Right. Right. So with the hundred miles, obviously it'll take you two days, right? So do they cut you off a certain time and then you guys sleep and wake up and they restart the uh, clock? No, 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 no. You go through, you go through the night. Wow. What are you going to, you're really like, you're going to run for 24 hours. I'm, I, I can't wait to hear about this. <laughs> I know we're bringing you back on after this. I can't imagine running, power walking, hiking, any of it for that amount of time and the dedication that it takes. And like, that is what completely inspires me about you. And I'm just like, wow, that's so like, you know, you're going to need have a to bed be. pan after the hundred miles. <laughs> <laughs> I, might. I have to be honest though. Like it was funny because when I was choosing this race, um, I did, you know, a lot of research about like, okay, what's a good, like, if you're going to run that distance, like what's a good one to do, like as your first one, like where, like, and there's a lot of things to consider. And, and as far as like the, tr the support that you will have and the, and the elevation gain and the weather and the time of year, like and all of these different things that you, you want to think about when you're, when you're doing that. But, um, the race that I'm doing is called the Havelina hundred and it's outside of, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Um, but it is, um, it's, it seems obviously I haven't been there yet, but a little bit like burning man meets a hundred mile race. Like it's like, it's cause it's Halloween weekend and it's costumes and it's, and it's, DJs and there's like a dance floor or something at mile 50. I don't know all of these details, but like, and then you have your support crew, but like everybody wears costumes. And so 
I decided that this was a good place to start because it seems like there's a lot going on that can maybe keep me entertained. It sounds wow. like very, very entertaining. So we'll see. We'll see if that works. <laughs> I love the mindset, though. I love that you're going in with that mindset. It's going to be entertaining. I mean, this is, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> I mean, you have to have something to distract you for 100 miles. Like, because right. I mean, like, especially if you're what I think. Serving. particularly for the first time, like, it's just like, okay, what, like, what? And I think that was like, my goal with like picking the race, I was like, well, what environment seems like it's most conducive to me being successful? And I think costumes in a disco, like maybe could do it. <laughs> yes. Do you know so, what you're going to wear? I don't. I, I'm like, so a friend of mine um, is crewing for me because you have like a crew there with you. So she she's like really creative and so we've been tossing around a lot of ideas as far as like what our theme should be for our for our group so we'll see i love that you're doing it with your group and is your son doing it he no he is my crew chief like he is wow. he's handling like all of the logistics and food and that's everything. true how do you eat <laughs> I didn't even think about that. There, I mean, you've got to have, I mean, you're doing yeah, that. You know, what? actually, that's like one of the biggest parts of it to figure out. So like my training runs right now and then the races that I'm doing that are like the longer distances, like the 50K or 50 mile, um, a lot of, um, I'm working with the coach to figure out the nutritional aspect of it, like exactly what my body needs, like over time. So, so like with my 50 K there, like, there's a lot of calorie calculation and, and then you don't want to take it all at once. You want to do it slowly and you've got to figure out your liquids and, and hydration. What, yeah. Give us an example. Like what did you eat? So, so for my 50 K I did things like a little different than I did for the 50 miles. So for the 50 miles, I really tried to take in like whole foods after a while. So they make the like energy gels and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, but I did that at the beginning and then I ate more whole food as the, as the race went on. Um, for the 50 K I had like a really set structure of every 30 minutes. So I had a timer on my watch that would go off and every 30 minutes, then I would alternate between hundred calories and 150 calories. And I had everything measured out, like so I knew exactly what I was getting. And was it on your person, like, did you have the food on you the whole time, or do you have yes. stopped? Were you was it food? was it blended like a smoothie or a? No, so there's like um, different. There, there are different products out there that are that have like the calorie density that you need. Oh, okay. So yeah. Um, oh, okay, it's a liquid though. So, well, it's like, like the ones, uh, one I like is called like spring energy and it's, um, it's almost like the consistency of applesauce, mm -hmm. but like 300 calories in a pack. So, um, you know, but you know, there was, this was my first time keeping track of my calories so accurately. So I'm definitely still learning, but it seemed to, what I did a couple weekends ago seemed to work really well. So I'll be kind of right. taking that. And then most people, as time goes on, they start eating like some real foods, but it's figuring out then what are the real foods that you eat? Like at the 50 miler, the thing that was really palatable was they had like little boiled salted potatoes. Oh, yeah. Um, and so that was, you know, that tasted really good and the and um or like the broth from ramen um like that like salty right to replace your electrolytes that time. right like it, it, so you kind of get into this like where there's like certain things that you that taste really good but so right now i'm just trying to figure out what those things are so, so are you yeah. like running and, and eating it or you stop for a second uh, uh, um, like this past weekend, there was a lot of just eating it while I was running. Um, okay. they, but they do have like all of these races have aid stations where they have food and you can stop and you can eat like 
take it, take your, you know, fuel in like at those aid stations, or you can kind of grab it and go. Wow. This is kind of personal preference. It's so, very impressive. It is hugely impressive. And that's why I really wanted to get you on here to talk about this because you are so busy in life in general, and you're taking on this huge task of running for 24 to 30 hours all at once doing a hundred mile race and you're training for it and you're making it happen. So like this, you're an extreme version because a lot of our clients, a lot of your clients that come to you, a lot of the women that work with all of us, they're just wanting to start exercising or they're wanting to get a healthier lifestyle. And where there's a will, there's a way. And when you can prioritize getting healthy, you will make time for that. And that's the big thing is we have to make ourselves a priority. We've got to make our health a priority. And this 100 mile race is really important for you and you're making it happen. I'm assuming that there's also things that are happening in your life that you're not able to do because you have to train. Like there might be some dinners or might be some events that you can't go to because you've got to train. And you've got to be able to wake up early enough to get in the miles or whatever it is. So mm -hmm. it's there are things that don't happen, so you right. can make this happen. Right, and it's a matter of just understanding, like you know. And this is a conversation that I have a lot with with the women that I work with. But like, what are the things that are really important to you? And actually, like intentionally identifying those things, and because then you can start making decisions based on that. But like, if we haven't gone through that process of identifying like what it is we really want for our health, for our well being, and what are the things that are really important to us? Like, if we haven't spent the time in that space identifying those things, then when we're making decisions, like we're just making decisions based on just do like, I mean, for example, I had one client who was telling me how like full her day was. And I said, well, when you like when a friend calls and asks you to go to lunch, like how do you make that decision? Like what is guiding you in making that single decision about your lunch date? Like and she said, well, I look at my calendar and see if there's space available or if I'm a free. And if I am, then I say yes. And I'm like, but like what if this is not really a friendship that's important to you? Or what if like, like we have to, I mean, and, and, and not to like say anything bad about our friends, but just pointing out, like we have to understand like what it is like, cause when she's like not able to make any time for herself and for exercise or for, you know, cooking and cooking healthy meals or these things, then we have to start evaluating like how she's spending her day and is she spending her day on the things that are really, really important to her? And, and when you start clarifying that and identifying those things, then you can start making decisions based on, on that versus just whether or not you have free time. So, so powerful. I think Marcia is frozen, so we're going <laughs> to we'll get back in here. But it's true. We, I mean, people have to pay attention and see what is... Like, what are their priorities? And we need to make ourselves, women need to make themselves a priority. Mm -hmm. So, Madeline, how do yeah. people find you? When is your oh. next session? Like, all this fun stuff, because I want people to be able to connect with you if they want yes. to. Yes, yes. My practice is Women's Health Elevated. And so it is a coaching, a health coaching and lifestyle medicine practice for women. And I am on Instagram. Um, Facebook a little bit, and then I my website is womenshealthelevated.com. Boom. So if you guys want to reach out to Dr. Madeline, that's how you find her at Women's Health Elevated, womenshealthelevated.com. She's amazing. You are you inspire me on the daily. <laughs> One piece, what's it what, what's a, a word of inspiration that you have for women who are just starting on this journey? Like how how do they get started or what, what's something that you've learned from all your training and everything you've done and how you've made it happen? You know what? I think 
this might make it seem oversimplified, but yet I think it's a really important first step is like when people, because so frequently I feel like women actually have the not like, they know where they currently are. They know where they want to be. They know the steps that, that, that they think will get them to where they want to be with their health. Like they understand healthy eating. They understand that they need to be exercising and all of this. But bridging that gap is where they struggle. And so I always ask, I always ask people like, what feels hard? Like, when you start looking at like, okay, like what is the challenge? Like what is, and, and have them like really start exploring and verbalizing like what, why does it feel hard? Like, where is the problem? And so, because when you start answering that, then you have this beautiful place to start strategizing and figuring it out. Because if they're like, well, you know, I just, put everybody else first and I don't have time. Okay. Well then that's where we need to work. Like if that's, what's feeling hard, then that's our point where we start. And, and so I think it's really important that when people are kind of struggling, that they need to really clarify what it is, like what is the thought that's feeling so hard and that creates that feeling like that it's, that it's difficult and then address that as a starting point. I absolutely love that. And I also think that it's so important that people reach out for help, like getting a coach, seeing a therapist, whatever it is, because just like when you were going through your coaching certification, that's Mm -hmm. when you discovered you wanted to do this right. incredible feat. And it opened up so many doors. And when you mm-hmm. do work with someone else, a therapist, a coach, or whatever, then there's so many possibilities. Yes. And I think it's like so much of it. I, I truly believe like everybody needs a coach for whatever they're like, whatever they're working on. Like, I just can't even, um, you know, say enough about like, like how powerful that can be. Because just to have somebody ask you the questions and you have like taking the time to think and then verbalize like what's going on up here is just and having somebody kind of objectively like talk through it. Like and it's just um, I just feel like had, had someone not asked me like what is your real vision for like what you want out of your life? Like I would never be doing exactly what I'm doing. Like it it takes like somebody asking you that question and making you really think about it. I'm so glad your coaching partner asked you that because what you're doing is you're helping so many women and look at your life, how full it is now. It's beautiful to see. Right. 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 Well, and it's just like finding that balance. And I think that's what I, I, like, I feel like I have, have finally found it. It took a long time. (laughs) No, and it does sound like you found it, and we'll we'll wrap it up. But literally, it sounds like you found it because even your life, like when I was asking, what do you do to recharge and like re- recharge yourself? Your training, your lifestyle is very re-energizing in and of itself, and that is brilliant. I think so few people have that. You have created the life that you love, and you love the life you live, and I think that is magical. That says it beautifully. So amazing. You're amazing. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you guys so, so much. Please tell, tell Marcia like, hello, or goodbye. <laughs> no, and she commented, she said, I'm so sorry. Her internet froze and she was so bummed. She loves you too. You are so inspiring. Thanks again for being here. And Thank you, you Jackie. Anytime, anytime. Yes, and you guys will have her back on after what her 100 mile race. Reach out to her, connect with Dr. Madeline Hardacre, women, women's health elevated. Women's health elevated. <laughs> bye bye. Bye guys.